this is James Gavin, the Senior Tech Geek, and in this video, with the virus and the shutdowns and our industry in such a very difficult position at the moment, I thought we'd do a video on, you know, saving costs. You know, when we come out of this, we need to cut our costs. We're going to have a be behind the behind a little bit, so we want to make sure that we um, cut our costs. And one of the areas where we're using a lot of money is on power. And with the talk in recent times quite popular about how to turn off your equipment properly during this prolonged closure period, um, turning off the power, turning off your equipment to save some, some dollars, I thought I'd do a video which is a general uh, video on how much it costs to, to leave your equipment on, why, why you wouldn't, and other issues to do with um, equipment and leaving it on and how to surface it and costs in doing so. So um, let, let's get into it. I'm going to go through a few little demonstrations. First this old old machine here. I'm going to show you how much power, for example, one of these older machines utilizes. And then I'm going to show you um, roughly here in Australia how much uh, I would pay to leave something like this on 24 hours a day. And then I'll actually go through a more modern rack. I've got there a test system and we'll go have a look at the, the watts that they actually use and then we we'll get an idea how much it costs to leave that on. And then we'll have another look at you know other things that you typically have to leave on which is um, TMSs or other servers that you know are doing a lot of the housekeeping at night. So let's get into it. First of all we have an older GDC um, DCI media player. This is typically used with the older Series 1 projectors with SDI out from there to the projector. So this is sort of the first generation usually based on a big computer and let's just have a look here. I've just got this plugged in and it's not even turned on and it's using 9 watts. Right which isn't a lot so we'll turn it on and we'll have a look at how much damage and it makes a bit of noise how much damage it'll uh, affect you as a cinema owner and the amount of what to delete when it's on now you'll see here it's pretty much already there we're up to 200 and something watts it's booting up but in general this server when it's doing nothing will eat around 200 200 watts um, and when it's playing probably a little bit more I can't make it play at the moment because I don't have a projector to go with it but um, when it's decoding the de decompression and other bits and pieces it'll probably eat quite a few watts more so just so if you are leaving something like this on at night uh, we'll go to the calculator now to show you exactly like how much for example in Australia it would cost to leave this on permanently now here we've got a little um, spreadsheet that I created in uh, Google the Google spreadsheet application and you'll see here I've programmed the um, kilowatt hour, 21 cents. And then, for example, uh, a 100 watt globe would be 0 0.1 kilowatt hours, right? So then I work it out basically cost per hour, cost per day, cost per year. So just to leave a 100 watt lamp on would cost you $183 in power over that year. So the GDC with um, 0.2 or 200 watts would roughly be that amount. So you can change, like if you over here, I can change that if you've got slightly lower, if you're in an industrial area, you might get slightly lower rates. Um, and you hit it there and you can see the, 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 the amounts will change. This is a little spreadsheet I created. So that gives you an idea. Um, so if you do measure how many watts your equipment takes, um, and if you want, I can send you this, uh, a link to this spreadsheet or how to do it. Um, you can actually calculate uh, how many watts or how many watts it uses, and as such, the cost per year that it will cost you all per month, per day. All right, let's move on to something a little bit more ambitious, and we'll have a look at actually a projection ra rack with a sound processors and other bits and pieces, and have a have a look at how much all that equipment um, costs us to run. All right, now behind me, I've got a test bed of projector player and everything like you'd have in a cinema. This is actually used for me to do my software development as a test platform uh, for my for me and my cinemas, the autonomous cinemas that, uh, that I run from this office. Now it's basically like any other cinema, it's pretty much the same as what we have in the field and I'm going to go through it now and take all the power readings. Uh, luckily the UPS actually measures everything so I can turn everything on and off individually and get all the numbers and we'll put it back into a spreadsheet. Now I've got it all off at the moment because you know it, it generates quite a lot, a lot of noise and especially even though when the projector up the top there is in standby it's still generating quite a lot of noise and that's because a lot of fans etc are still on when it's in standby um, now why are they on well that's probably a legacy sort of issue and to a degree um, I wanted to point this out here is that you know one of the reasons why 
um, Barco's new, new Series 4 projectors are really dominating the markets. The reason I said that they were uh, the product of the year at CinemaCon last year was specifically for this reason. They know how to be car when they're in standby mode, they really know how to turn themselves off so fans aren't running, etc. So fans and other consumables, yes, if you leave them on, they have a certain hour hour lifespan, etc. If you're running them when you don't, you are wasting money. And so that's the next big thing happening a lot in cinema is a lot of the equipment is starting to understand this use model we need to keep it on to upgrade well to monitor it and to you know push all the content to it and to get them all prepared for the following day and it's very common most big complexes will leave the equipment on all the time so reducing the power utilization of the equipment when it is on the overnight period where it's actually not really doing much um, and turning off certain fans is a big plus and that's something the the new barco uh Cineonic, um series 4 really has really uh really jumped ahead of everyone else so give it have a look at the barco uh, or the, the new series 4 equipment to get some more information on that i'm very impressed with that but so yes um we'll go through the spreadsheet now and i'll show you how much each of this equipment uses like i'm actually going to turn it on and run it and do a few little comparisons and it'll give you an idea of how much money you, you will be it will cost you depending on what you turn on and off uh during the year okay here we are so this is a lot of the equipment in the rack we'll start here there's a switch pretty much 22 amps the uh, uh, qsc amps are, are four channel uh, amplifiers i used to power the speakers in the test lab you can actually see there's actually quite a little bit of difference between the two which is quite unusual but 0.38 uh, and 0.34 so this is how much you're going to be costing if you leave them on for a year it's actually not that high but you must remember if you have a 10 screen cinema this does start to add up very quickly um, very interesting the old um, we use the old um, uh, the JSD sort of technology very low uh, very low watts on those very impressed that's very good you can leave them on with very little cost but now we're really talking about the projector itself um, and here um, is where even in standby um, it's nearly uh, a, a thousand, oh, 100 watts, which is like a 100 watt globe on all the time, which is um, that much per year or pretty much the same. Again, this is based on 20 cents per kilowatt hour. So uh, you may need to adjust that for how much you pay for your power, but it's a good range for you to have a uh, comparison to what you're paying for. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So 44% on the lamp, well, the lamp off, is that, is that much? Just leaving it. Um, leaving it on so you will need your projector on for example to power the internal media block um, so you can load content on it into it and do certificate checking and all that sort of stuff the projector needs to be on not in standby but actually on because um, you need your IMS to be powered um, and interesting enough um, uh, I did. I did. When I did the comparison, um, I, basically the IMS is, is not using a lot of power. Where, I, where did I find that? I did, I'll get to it eventually. Um, so this is with the forty-four percent power, one hundred percent power, and thirty percent power. You can see the different. You know, seven hundred and thirty, one thousand five hundred twenty-eight, and five and um, lowest power is five hundred ninety-eight watts. And this is how much it costs to be running them at the time per year or per day or, or cost per hour for example is probably more interesting because that gives you an idea how much it costs to run the cinema f for a film for cost two hours to run a film and you're running at 44 percent it's costing you um that much in power right um okay playing with uh 44 percent very little i thought there'd be more of a change um see that one there and that one there um there's only two watts yeah i thought there'd be more because the, the system is now actually um decoding and uh and uncompressing the content so you know i'm surprised there's there's not a lot of overhead there for that um but anyway uh so then all all of it playing together um so that was the whole rack playing playing a, a movie uh with a kdm and everything so it was decompressing decoding and you can really see there it's uh that's pretty much what you're paying uh there now that's um gives you an idea of how much it costs to run a, a small screen system like that with uh, this equipment you've got this list of the equipment here so you've got comparison um and uh how much it's going to cost now the next thing i wanted to get into is that a lot of the times and you really do need to leave these on as we're getting into digital digital 
distribution. And I'll, I'll, first of all, I'll, I'll show you some stuff downstairs and I'll come back and I'll talk about it. Behind me here is uh, a rack. Um, this is where I house all my servers for my software development and controlling all my um, cinemas remotely from. So this is sort of my little cloud center here where I've got all my instances of all the systems which actually operate my cinema. Now I wanted to show you this because like, uh, like any cinema, you have systems or servers in there keeping it going or arranging all the content, arranging all the playlists and um, programming the systems, moving content around. And usually you would have something like a, a nice beefier system up here um, doing that for you overnight. And that system stays on all the time. Um, you'll have some other things, maybe a router. I've got a server to do a router here because I've got a, you know, a lot of with a lot of networking going to our locations. You might have just a, a simple little router like from an ISP. But you've got that equipment on it's sitting there all the time. And new equipment that's coming online is likely having a, a system like um, something like one of these or another smaller computer. Like one of these is just very good. This is only eating basically uh, 100 watts. And put a few more hard drives, a, few, a little bit more, and when it's operating, probably up to 140 watts if you really um, um, put a lot of con you know, a lot of drives in it and extra memory potentially. But you want systems like this because um, uh, now we're in the era of content delivery. Uh, and that delivery seeps over your line on a constant basis and server needs to be on there all the time to receive it. So there's another need for another server potentially. Now, um, actually, I'm actually of the belief that if you have a TMS, that could act. A TMS system could also act as a content delivery platform as well. Though there's been a push by a number of vendors to put in their own solutions um, because, you know, that's two degrees a marketing plan because uh, they want to... Uh, pretty much tie your site up saying oh you, you and tell the distributors that we own that site we've got a computer there please you you must sort of use us to get content to the location I'm not a big fan of that because it doesn't that's more of a marketing plan for those people out there servicing the industry to try and um, you know build a, you know, a slight monopoly play or something to, to um, drive some power from that sort of marketing side of things. We just want to show films to similar operators and we don't want to have to put too many servers in. For example, imagine if you had five companies um, wanting to send you content and they all wanted to put in a new server. So there's five servers running five different, you know, there's you know, 100 to 150 watts, 100 to 150 watts each. Um, it adds up very quickly, it's very, it's very costly. And then again, it, because it's specialized, because they send it to you, they've got people managing it, and that costs them money, which again comes back to you and costs you money because every dollar they make, they make it through you selling your ticket. At some, any way you look at it, you're paying for it in some way, shape or form. So I'm a big believer that we need to take control of that ourselves as in cinema operators and manage it and, 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 and make sure the costs are controlled and are to the benefit of us and even to a degree sometimes the distributor because they will pass on the cost to you anyway. So um, this is a, 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 a rising tide that's all boats. This will help us all together in bringing content cost effectively to our audiences. So that's, you know, those are some things why you, you will need to have these systems on all the time. And I wanted to really uh, make a note of, you know, putting all, all the, you know, these machines which these service providers are asking you to put in does have a cost. Does, um, you, know, you know, for example, like another example, if this system is put in by, if, if you have a system put in from a special service provider, it is a custom system, if it fails, etc. Um, it's a big job to get it fixed because it's specialised. If it's just a g general computer like a lot of these things and you can get your local um, computer to repair person to come in and fix it, there's a lot of cost savings there from you know going to the uh, commodity based servers and uh, uh, providers in your region rather than going to specialist based providers of these custom solutions. And I really advise us to move away from that because especially after this crisis where um, we will be, you know, there's going to be some uh, pulling, you know, um, making some money back from the, we're going to all take a little bit of a hit here. So we have to be smarter, um, run cleverer, um, you know, make sure we keep control of our costs. And to do that, we need to keep control of our equipment. Anyway, let's have a quick look um, at the equipment. I'll show you some stuff down here. Um, this sort of equipment here, so this is this is just a little um, router, but it, it's pretty much 
um, got um, the same sort of uh, capabilities of a little server that you may want to use as like this could be a, t a, 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 a TMS or you know if you put uh, filled up all these drives you'd still have enough storage for a, s a small cinema and it could do the TMS functions it could do content delivery functions all in the one server not a problem there's no reason you couldn't do that um, uh, I myself have you know a lot of um, big storage server for all my development and this is a large um, virtual uh, that's a VM sort of VMware or uh, equivalent based system where I can uh, uh, make lots of instances and testing and other bits and pieces so this is but really at the end of the day you'll either have one or potentially two servers uh, running permanently and I really suggest that you um, ensure that you maintain them yourself effectively and I also like to bring back the story which I talk about quite a lot um, and let's talk about that VPF is over. Um, so during the VPF period, a lot of the integrators um, used the fact that they had to supply the uh, certain data back to the studios, and due to that uh, requirement, they demanded control over your network and your projection solution. They put in very complicated and um, sophisticated solutions. Uh, I look at them sometimes think the only reason they've gone that that so that level of complexity is because well it's a bit of a lock-in play for so that um, it's very difficult for someone off the street to come in and maintain the solutions when you've got custom control switches VLANs and all this sort of stuff with um, sophisticated network boundaries and other um, technical stuff which I've seen in some of the other um, cinemas that um, I've been into where it's like to, for, for someone like me who knows all how all this works is I, I program and I write software for it I says now nah, I don't need to study this thing for a day or so before I can even touch it because it's just too complicated and that's completely unneeded um, and the locations I've done a lot of work with we generally have some good equipment but we also make sure that we can replace equipment on the spot with off-the-shelf stuff if we need to rather than having to wait for example all this sophisticated complex equipment if it fails you need to get some engineer from uh, some region of Australia to come up and program it all again. Very expensive. We don't need it. Um, we're just small cinemas. You don't need. Um, you know, it's, it's like um, if if I'm if I'm a small business, I don't need the IT infrastructure that is given to a bank. Well, that's what's happening in this industry, and we need to move away from that. That's not smart. Um, but yeah, so let's keep going. Um, uh, and finally, yes, that's the price of that um, but yeah I, I think I've gone on long enough uh, this is James Garden Cinetech Geek bye for now